Hello, welcome back. Let's have a look at Chapter 2 of The Cabbage Patch Ball by Paul Jennings. I'm on page 13 if you're following along at home. All the kids went outside to look at the vomit. 72 oysters, beer and bits of red and green stuff do not make a pretty sight, especially when they've been chewed up and swallowed first. None of the kids would clean it up. Neither would Mum. The hog always returns to its own vomit, she said. Everyone felt a bit ill. Except Dad. He scooped the sick up on a shovel and dug it in around the tiny cabbage. Good fertiliser, he said with a grin. It was good fertiliser too. That cabbage grew to a huge size within a month. Dad watered it every night. He loved that cabbage. Anyone would have thought it was a person. He patted it and loved it just like a baby. He didn't feel like a failure anymore. Everything was good. Until the beginning of the war. See, Dad decided to have a barbecue, but he didn't invite our neighbour, Wacker. I was a bit upset because his daughter, Robin, was my best friend. I want Robin to come, I said. It's only for the cricket club, said Dad. Wacker can't play cricket for nuts. The day of the barbecue arrived. The new gas barbecue was fired up. The first stubby was opened. The first sausage started to sizzle. There was a lot of laughing and joking. The CD was pumping out Dad's old Irish music. The sun was shining. Perfect. Except that Robin wasn't there. And then it happened. Smoke. Not nice barbecue smoke. Stinking, swirling smoke coming from over the fence. Everyone started to cough and choke and rub their eyes. It was terrible. The smoke was so thick that it blotted out the sun. Strike, yelled Dad. Where's that coming from? He tried to pull himself up to peer over the fence, but he couldn't quite manage it. His beer pot was bigger than ever. He grabbed a chair and stood on it. Then he peered down into Wacker's garden. Jeez, said Dad. Wacker's having a burn off. Today of all days. Chris scrambled up and sat on the fence with him. Wacker was setting fire to old tyres, grass and green branches that he'd cut from his trees. Hey, Wacker, yelled Dad. Cut it out. We're having a barbie over here. Yeah, said Chris. We're having a barbie. I know you are, said Wacker. You can hear it from miles away. Why don't you turn that music down? It's a terrible racket. You can't have a party without music, said Dad. And you can't have a fire without smoke, said Wacker. Dad glared over the fence. Put out that fire. You turn off the music. Never, said Dad. Get nicked then, yelled Wacker through the smoke. He threw another branch on the fire with an evil chuckle. Wacker had a very mean laugh. He also had a beer gut that was just as bad as Dad's. In fact, Wacker and Dad had the biggest beer bellies in the district. Suddenly, Dad grinned to himself. Then he rushed across the garden and fetched the hose. He fixed a sprinkler to the end, the sort that you can adjust to spray wherever you want. He set it on the ground and turned on the tap. Get him, Dad, yelled Chris. He's so immature, it's Chris. I will, son, I will, said Dad. A huge jet of water shot up over the fence and fizzed down onto the fire. In no time, the fire was out. Dad looked like a general who'd just won a huge battle. He was very happy with what he'd done. That's the end of chapter two. That might be the most Australian chapter of any book that I've ever read. We've got Wacker. We've got um, <laughs> the beer guts. We've got the stubbies being opened. They're having a barbie. Turning on the sprinkler. Fantastic. Um, post any comments underneath if you have anything you'd like to say about that chapter and I'll see you for chapter three.